Yes indeed, y'all. Yes indeed. Welcome to UDR Productions. Please like, subscribe, and share. It doesn't cost you nothing to subscribe. So we can keep bringing you guys all this good content from prayer to streets. UDR Productions. Let's go and let's get it. Before I go, before I start the show, I'm gonna meet my boy with another floor. I'm looking for a great time. And you never know what's gonna come out of my mouth. The worst thing for sure is gonna come from the heart. Folks, I'm about to go inside Murphy's floor. Don't follow me, I'm about to get it in. Ladies and gentlemen. Brothers and sisters, what's going on? What's goody? You listen to your boy being politically correct. MVP, most valuable Paul, the proud Daniel Black, radical Puerto Rican man of God from the Bronx for Life Starter. Currently resigned in Bridgeport CT. Folks, we are live. Live at Murphy's Law Restaurant. Like I said, whenever I say Murphy's Law, we're not talking about the TV show. We're not talking about the DA, the jurisdiction, none of that. We're talking about the restaurant downtown Bridgeport. Give a shout out to them for opening up this platform for us to really speak and really um, support the business in itself. Um, if you, if go, folks, if you want to have an amazing rasta pasta, my man was having that earlier. Like he had that for dinner. If you want to have some rasta pasta, some nice baked ziti with some nice cheese and creativity and some vegetables, it's just delicious classic dish. Definitely go to Murphy's Law. Seafood, classic wine, definitely go to Murphy's Law. So I want to give them a shout out first and foremost once again for opening up this door for us to give us this opportunity. Now, as far as conversation today, I want to take it to two places. But before I start, I want to share a poem to really introduce tonight's topic. And this, and this poem that I'm doing is called Can I Cry Ever Be Heard? And this is about, once again, bringing this conversation to light about why people of color continue to be shafted. As you guys heard, what happened to Breonna Taylor, the cops walked away or quit it. I'm not surprised, but I'm very disappointed. And should I be angry? No, because this is the world that we live in, but it does not stop us from fighting the true fight of the oppression of not handouts or pity, but equality and fairness that we all bleed the same color as one. So this poem goes like this. Can I cry as I be heard? My heart goes out to the five years of age of that white kid in North Carolina who was killed mercilessly by a black neighbor. My heart bleeds out in the streets knowing that his father's burning his baby boy. It should be the other way around. Black neighbor was caught, arrested, and doing time in prison. Those are cries that need to be heard, as it should. Where's those same cries for Breonna Taylor, who was also executed mercilessly by cops? I have yet to heard about them being captured, arrested, and doing time in prison. Which, by the way, went to the wrong house and killed them with no remorse. There wasn't any apologies of, I'm sorry. It has been five months of no retribution. And you wonder why retaliation is fired away with heavy ammunition. There's no accountability. Where is the responsibility? This is why black life matters. This is why our lives must matter. Can I cry ever be heard? And that's the poem, Can I Cry Ever Be Heard? So let me state this. When I heard the news about the cops being acquitted, I wasn't surprised. You know, it, it, it just seems emotionally drained. It seems mentally fried as far as the constant battle of this fight, as far as not being pity. We're not asking for handouts, as I said, but we, what we're asking for is fairness. The same element of crime that a white person committed should be doing time for that crime. Just like the same element, the same crime element of what a black person does, they should do time. So crimes that's being committed has nothing to do with color. It's about the crime 
and the repercussions for committing these acts. It's about scent and not skin. It's about grace and not race. But the way the world does it is that they have to keep trying to remind us that as long as color exists, there's going to be division. And we're not about bringing about division. We're not bringing about dichotomy. It's about unity and staying focused to what's at hand. It's about staying focused to what the fight is truly all about. Not hitting agendas, not promoting own marketing brand that got nothing to do with this movement. This movement is about the fairness and really suppressing the systemic oppression of a system that is not broken, but is tailor-made because it's corrupted. We gotta continue to march on and continue to kneel. Even though, even, even if folks don't kneel, that's okay. But make a statement to say that there is injustice, that this is not a figment of our imagination. And I believe that we have to continue to really expand and really um, branch out on these conversations. Because at some point in time, there has to be an end time. At some point in time, there has to be uh, um, solutions. And there will be a solutions. And what folks are going to try to use is COVID to diffuse the issue at hand. They're going to try to ignore these issues by not speaking about that because they haven't faced it. It's like someone saying, I want to speak about B. But if someone's talking about A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y, it's because they don't want to face B. They don't want to face the issue at hand. And I'm here to let you know that what happened to Breonna Taylor is unacceptable. And all it takes is for a person of color to say something stupid like a Charles Barkley to say that, oh, what happened to her is not in the same stratosphere as George Floyd. I'm sorry, time out, last time I checked, injustice is an injustice. That's like trying to compare a sin to another sin. Oh, if you lie, it's no big deal, but if you do something worse, it's, it's bad. No, it's a sin, it's a sin. It's plain and simple. You cannot compare how she was killed and how George Floyd was killed and put that in this, and, and, and to not say that they don't belong in the same stratosphere, to me, is as absurd and it's blasphemous. The point of what this movement is all about is to address these issues that we, that's been happening and it's still happening. And during that time that this is going on in terms of this movement that we're fighting against, we have to love each other. We gotta to continue to unify and continue to focus in on what's the issue at hand and continue to press onward and move upward and stand up. That doesn't mean that to stand up means I'm gonna put somebody down. That doesn't mean, what up baby? Everybody right? I, everything's good, how are you? All right, all right, yo, you got a moment, come up here. If you got a minute, come up here. Folks, listen, pour my chain thought, my man's just giving me a shout out, I gotta give my shout out right back. Um, but as I was saying before, though, what you know, what Barkley was saying about Breonna Taylor, what's up, baby? What Barkley was saying about Breonna Taylor, what to me was was absolutely blasphemous. And to sit there and to not come and to sit there and try to compare the two is like, dude, this is what people who are unaffected are waiting for. That's what they're waiting for is to say, yeah, see, look, a person of color is talking down upon and and, and not showing respects and family who are mourning of her tragic death. So once again, I said this before and I say this again, we must do better. We got to do better. What's up, baby? All right, how are you? I'm doing how good. Do What's up with you? Huh? Talk. How do we do better at the law? You know what? Turn that mic on. Is that mic on? Oh, no. Nah. He, he asked a great question. That mic on, can you hear it? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Is the mic on, babe? Yeah. All right, say something. How can we do better if the law don't do better? You know what? Hold on a second. Folks, we just found a technical difficulty. We Testing one, two, one, two. Oh, there we go. Microphone check, microphone check, one, two, four. We're gonna have a blast. You asked now. You asked a really good question. You said, "How can we do better?" It starts with us, meaning we have to educate each other and highlight on um, what is the main focus that we're trying to um, address, and not think about ourselves and be selfish. But we gotta be selfless and think about others and say, "Look." Let's help each other out and fight this movement to stop the corruption that's going on for years. Yeah. But we got it starts with us to, 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 to love each other, to educate each other, to uplift each other, and to encourage each other. That's what it starts with. What do you guys say to that? But I understand that the, the girl that got killed, I, I just heard about a while back. Yeah. It was for no reason. They broke into her house, they, they raided her house, and they just shot her. 
I don't understand what I don't I don't know exactly what happened, but it don't seem right. Well the thing about it was they were saying that um that first of all they bum rushed the house and her boyfriend now is there. They were saying that, oh, well, he shot the cops. Well, first of all, if you're going to someone's house, you have to announce yourself who you are. Because right. anyone can sit there like, oh, I'm this person. No. Do you have a warrant? Let me see a badge. Does he live there or he's just there? Right. So he's looking at like, well, if these are people trying to commit burglary and trying to like rob the house, well, what does what what you know? What's the second what does the second round of constitution say? The right to bear arms. Exactly. He's looking at it like, well, you know what? You're trying to hurt me. I don't know that you're a cop. I'm going to kill you. Exactly. That's the mindset. So he's looking at it like, yo, I'm trying to protect my home. And then they saying that the cop didn't even get they didn't press charge on the cops that killed him. They pressed one of the cops because he aimed at the wrong building. Like, how stupid is that? <laughs> Like how corrupt stupid is that? Like no, no, but it is stupid. You know why? No, it, it is corrupt to be. You know why it's stupid? It's because when you have the when you have the police union, knowing that what they what they fellow man or woman did was wrong, they're gonna still try to fight to the end. Right, right. And if you see how, and, and I'm not saying I condone, but I'm saying you see how they are fighting to the end, and they're forming this whole union to like. Protect their police brother and sister, their fellow man and woman. That's how we got to do it. As far as you know, we got to be the union in our community, not saying to stand, not to, to, to outcast and brush people off, but we got to unify and say, look, we got to fight this to the end to address the injustices that's going on in our community. Well, and, it's, she, and it's just insane. Yes, sir. Was she doing the right thing? Was she, was she? She was asleep. How can she do the right thing? Who, who, how can she do the right thing? And she's asleep. Yeah. My thing is, how are you going to bum rush and not announce yeah. who you are? Yeah. Last time I said you're supposed to knock on the door and identify yeah. yourself. That's, exactly. that, that's in any, any, situation. any procedure that when the police is going to raid someone's house for any reason, for drugs, for, for, for gang, trafficking, whatever the case may be, you're supposed to identify yourself. They did not. Wow. But the sad part was that not only that she got killed her family's morning, but then you got people like I was saying earlier, Charles Barkley saying that her death's not the same strategy like, like George Floyd. Dude, that's like trying to compare sin to sin. You can't. You can't. There's no way. That's like trying to compare a struggle to another struggle. Your struggle's not the same as mine. It's like mine may not be the same as yours, but it's still a struggle. Right, In right. some way or another, there was a hardship there that we had to overcome. It's the same idea with Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. They both was killed mercilessly by cops. Different cities, different town, different time of the hour. It still happened. And the, the mindset has to be altered. Yes, sir. How can we do How can we convince that? Though? I know we're trying to protest and looting, routing, routing, writing, writing. But how can we prevent that, though? How can we? We got to make it, you know, you know, you I think, unity, you know. But how can we get unity if we still don't can't trust? Them? There has to be, you know what? The law, the masses has to, the, the, the way, I, this is just my opinion. The, the way it needs to happen is that. The, the, the mantra has to be, let's all come together as one. Because you have people that was unaffected, like the millennial white kids. Uh -huh. They was in that battle saying, look, I'm in it for my brother because this is wrong. Right, right, right. So what I'm saying is that the, the large masses of people that have witnessed these brutal murders has to say, you know what? We got to rise against that and just march and really go hit these neighborhoods and really go hit, especially D.C. at 1600 Penn Avenue. Wow. And, and let it be known. And I'm not saying big ruckus. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying bring about ruckus, bring about uh, um, um, controversy. I'm saying we bleed red like you. If I cut myself, you cut yourself, he cut himself, and, 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 and so on that's unaffected. If we took it up and cut ourselves, what color do we bleed? We bleed the same color, which is red. So what is the conversation? You know how it becomes a conversation? Because those who are... Pardon me, folks. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Because those who are... I have to take off one second right back. Yeah, go ahead. What's cooking? Tamika, what's the name? Rose and Old? You told me to go talk on the mic. I don't hear my mic. Oh, oh, wait. Folks. Folks. the word. Folks, listen. Listen. We're going to have a black... My man, yo, listen. Thank, good looking out for speaking right, up, man. Yes, sir. We're going to talk again. Folks, we're going to have a blast. Right, we're going to have a blast. See, that's what okay. makes being politically correct so unique is that you never know what's going to happen. You never know. You're never going to know what's going to come about. But we want to bring the news. I'm not going to say. Because what they don't say, we're going to say. And, and like I said before, it's just a travesty as far as seeing what she... Is, is going to be known for is, is just 
her time was taken way too soon. She had a whole life ahead of her, had a career going, but we will never know how great she's gonna be because her life was taken way too soon. But at the end of the day, we as people of color, it's not saying we're gonna create black versus white. No, we have to unify as one. At the end of the day, it's about that movement to really address what's at hand. And like I said, stay focused to what's going on and just be, just be humble and just be inspired. And just make sure that in this time of movement, folks, once again, palm for the little technicality part. But it ain't stop me from talking. You can see the Lord gave me a voice to speak with, and I'm going to be speaking and talking and talking and speaking. There we go. So look, I'm, I'm having a great time here, like once again. But at the end of the day, no seriousness in that regard, let's continue to stay focused and hone in on what the issues at hand, and let's make sure that we continue to unify and become a stronger community. That's number one. Number two, you know, I always said before that it's easy for people to go out into neighborhoods and clean up everybody else's mess. We still have not cleaned up our own mess. Why is that so? Two, I'm, gonna I'm just gonna give you two reasons and then we're gonna close this show out. Reason number one, I still see face mask on the floor. I still see dirt, pollution on the floor. I still see people not wearing a mask as far as, um, be, you know, as, far as uh, precautionary steps to contain COVID. People keep taking this as a joke. You ask those 130,000 people that passed away and tell that to their families how you keep not taking COVID um, seriously. I'm not saying have fear. I've always said faith over fear, but you cannot allow carelessness of, of us folks doing our part to prevent COVID from spreading even further. It's number one. Number two, there were two homicides that happened in Bridgeport. Murders, senseless killings. And it's like folks want to say, oh, we need to go out to these different states and go out to these different communities. No, take care of your own community because we're not doing a great job in taking care of our community. And I would like to have a time. Dog, we need to raise something. I would like to have a time. And I know those don't got, got me on this one. I would like to invite the mayor. I would like to invite the governor. Let's invite city council people. Come sit down over here. And let's have a conversation. And let's talk about solutions. I want y'all to have, see this seat right here right now tonight? This seat is open. We got the mics there, we got the headphones there. This is a platform for folks to chime in and share their thoughts. I can speak to the cows come home. I ain't got no problem doing that. But this ain't about me. It's about planting the seed to bring awareness. How can you clean up somebody else's dirty laundry and you ain't clean up your own? How can you sit and say, let's go out to these different states and neighborhoods to fix up the mess that we haven't fixed out here in our local community? So once again, I'd like to invite our Bridgeport Police Department, City Council people, I want the mayor, the governor, have a seat. Let's have a seat. Every Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m., we have Murphy's Law. And let's have a conversation. Let's strategize and focus on solutions. Because a lot of times, certain things come about and there's no steps to like, all we're doing is talking. Nah, let's get into solutions and let's really solidify what it means to be unified and to continue to love each other and continue to get rid of the issues of, of, of toxicity and the crimes and the illegal activities that's going on in our community. So I ask folks to please come see me. Come see my boy and I and say, hey, you know what, man? I mean, I like what you had to say. As a matter of fact, I might disagree with you. I say, okay, have a seat. Let's get down. Let's, let's brainstorm and let's strategize. Let's, have, let's, let's, let's educate each other and let's just incorporate and exponentiate the power of the mind. And that's what it's all about, folks. So listen, we got to be in a position of power. It's about strength and numbers. And like I said, until we fix our area and our local community, there's no way we're gonna fix other areas of communities and we haven't done it ourselves here because that makes you look hypocritical, it makes you look phony, and it makes you look disingenuous. And like I said, God don't like ugly. It's not cool. So with that being said, um, with that being said, I just say to you folks humbly, I say this humbly, <laughs> please subscribe to UDR Productions Go Love Team. Support your boy being politically correct. Well, the name of the show is being pointed to correct. Support your boy MVP, most valuable poet. And folks, like I said, 
This is about realness. This is about bringing attention to the truth. And I'm always seeking the truth. That comes from God first, and it comes from research, and just getting feedback from folks to like really get a feel to what they understand. Shout out to my man that was here, my man Earl. But that's all right though. I know you're out there grinding cooking, baby. But uh, once folks, once again, subscribe to UDL Productions, Go Love Team. Support your boy. And like I said, man, we gained lots of love. We got, as a matter of fact, we had lots of love before we even got here from people that just walked in, just acknowledging the owner there. I mean, my man, shout out to my man Hawk that, that came by and, 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 and blessed my boy with, with, with a wonderful roster pasta meal. And that's what it's all about. Folks, once again, before we close this out, I just want to remind folks, my man's had a nice grow, and he didn't even tell me about it. And I said, what you have for, what you have for dinner? He goes, yo, I got to look out for Murphy's Law and just show love. And he actually ordered a Rasta pasta meal, and he, I mean, I, I take his word for it. He said, envy, it was delicious. So like I said, folks, if you guys didn't move some Rasta pasta, some seafood, some wine, a place just to kind of hang out and just breathe easy and relax. Definitely go to Memphis Lawn, downtown Bridgeport. And once again, shout out to them for just opening up this platform for us to really speak from the heart. Guys, have a wonderful night. God bless you guys. Be safe. Stay warm. We're going to go ahead again until next time. Out.